the reactions of the industry is scary you know, against the artist and who is speaking about this. You're saying it's scary? Yeah, the reaction is scary because it's, uh, it's cancelling. So you risk your dreams, but I don't care. Like a lot of people are risking their lives and a lot of people are dying and a lot of children that are dreaming are dying every day. Rally is an Italian-Tunisian rapper and one of the biggest entertainers in the country. His music boasts 45 platinum certifications overall. He's also made headlines away from the studio. In recent months, he used his appearance at a major Italian song festival to demand stop the genocide. And he joins us now from Milan. Rally, thank you so much for coming on Real Talk. I appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. No, absolutely. Thank you, and thank you, listen, thank you for doing this in English as well. I know you speak four languages, so thank you for being accommodating to us. I try to do my best. I try to do my best. Gali, I, I want to start off, let's go, let's go back to, to last February. So you were a finalist yeah. in the Sinremo Italian Song Festival, which is one of the, the, the biggest festivals in the country. And, yeah. you know, during the finale, you're on stage and then you say stop the genocide. Stop the genocide. What was going through your mind before all this? Like, when did you decide that you were going to do this? Honestly, we, uh, it wasn't uh, organized. Like, I didn't organize nothing. I didn't prepare nothing. It was actually spontaneous. I swear, like, what I, what I remember is just... I don't remember nothing. It just came to my mind like really? this. And, you, you don't and, remember the yeah, moment? Just, I know. It's, it's just... It was unreal. I, I don't know how to explain it, but the timing was perfect and everything. Like, and uh, it's something I, I just asked Richolino, do you have something to say? And, and he inspired me, inspired me this to my ears, you know, and, and I just said that. So to answer to your question, yeah. I really don't know how that happened, but my whole performance, my whole uh presenza in uh in Saremo was was for that and when you when you look back at that video of that moment when you look back yeah, at it today I, when you look back after the performance what do you feel i feel that was the right thing to do and was what i promised to myself when i was a kid when before the success and when i was doing music at 13 years old 14 years old I always said to myself, one day when my, when my platform would be big, I will never, like, I, I will, I will uh, how can I say, take advantage from, from my platform to, to communicate the right things and to, to send a message and to make people know, actually, what is happening around the world because, because as I said there, the day after the final Sanremo night, uh, this thing is going on like way, way before the 7th of October. Like there is a first, first narrative that is going on since long, long time. And I like the first time I started to think about Palestine, I was really young. Like I, I was 10 years old, 11, 12. Like I was already talking about that at my school asking my teachers why we are not studying that you know and so when i see that moment in uh, in saremo uh the final speech i i just feel that i did the right thing mm. as a human being you know and i and i and i how can i say i did what i promised to myself when i was a kid and how did you feel when you saw the reaction? I mean, I think the first reaction that we saw was the criticism. I think the, um, the Israeli ambassador to, to Italy, he complained, right? He said that he said the event is, is spreading hatred and, and provocation in a superficial, irresponsible way. So when you heard that, I mean, what was your reaction then? I, I laughed. Like I was, you I laughed. was laughing. <laughs> yes, what the f Sorry. Yeah. It was re ridiculous, you know, and but I was really shocked and amazed and I really appreciate how the whole country was with me and the message in that in that moment. I felt honestly like 
I laughed about his uh, affirmation, what, about what he said, but straight straight away, straight, straight up, like I I had, um, I felt a, a big support from the country. So I felt a lot of hope yeah. in my heart. And it, it went viral on social media too, Rally. Like it was, the, the clip was shared everywhere. Yes. And children started to, to to talk about it at school and teachers start to to, to teach to their class uh, what is happening uh, in Palestine they started to talk about the genocide so the ambassador was against but the country started to learn mm -hmm. you know Let, let's go to another moment because you didn't you didn't stop there I mean there was another moment this one was a bit more recent was it was you had a show and then after the show, you said that let's have a moment of silence for, for Gaza. Yeah. Prima di continuare possiamo fare un minuto di silenzio, solo un minuto, per tutte le vittime in Palestina. And on your Instagram, yes. the, the caption for that video was, this is the only silence we need to keep. For the rest, never be afraid to speak out against any kind of injustice. I mean, this is translated from Italian. Um, but tell me about right. that moment. I mean, this wasn't too long ago. For me, like Milan, uh, Duomo, Piazza Duomo is a super important location. Like I grew up, is the center of my city where I was born and raised. First of all, performing there is a really big thing for me. And but still, one, still, even that day, I didn't felt to don't say nothing, and I felt that um was a good moment to 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 remember mm. because because uh, i just felt it you know right it's a little bit uh like i'm punished by that actually because i had to do another show i have to do another show on the 27th of june in naples and they canceled me because that that uh, because of that moment yes and what is your reaction to that? Do, do, do you feel any regret? This is something that happened two days ago. Uh, no, no, I don't feel regret at all. I'm just uh, surprised and shocked how an event of music, of art, where in a country where we have the freedom of uh, thoughts and to talk and to express ourselves as artists is a st stage. The stage always been for me a moment to ex to expression, to communication with the crowd, to to send a message. For me, uh, since I was a kid, like music without message is a little bit. I mean, it's not my style. I always kept the two the two things together, you know. So when this happened, uh, nothing happened actually the first day, but days after I had this communication. It's basically like I cannot perform, but uh, I mean, it's okay. I'm just, uh, how can I say, the feeling is just, I'm just disappointed and shocked and surprised by this move by Italian music industry, you know. But so what I think is just, is just they know, they know how much I, I care of this situation. Even they, they know that also the, the power of communication that I have. Right. So I'm thinking, imagine other people, you know, imagine other mm -hmm. artists that they have less power, what they do to them and what is happening every day around the world about la censura, no, being, being, um, ch ch censura canceled or canceled, yeah. thing, you know, uh, you can't cancel me completely you know you can do some stuff if you want like but it's okay but you you, you cannot like I, but i always think about other artists because uh okay it's weird it's weird it's weird that that you 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 pay this price like that if you wanna if you wanna send a message like a peace message uh, of this type it's, it's crazy that you the the price to pay is your dreams you know like to perform they they don't let you perform if you say some stuff which is crazy which is not what um like the, the country is not represented by this attitude 
by this behavior you know the country italy even if if even uh, if italy is didn't official officially recognize palestine as a country i feel and i see that the people know that palestine palestine is a country and they want the freedom of palestine you know so the decision of uh, the government the political decision of the country doesn't match with the real uh pensiero with the real thought of people you know but really i mean other artists you know in the industry could look at this example and be like well maybe it's best for us to stay silent you know because look at Rally for example he just you know he had a show getting canceled because of being outspoken do you feel like this is a price that you're paying uh yes yes but uh i mean i will always create my own stage and i will always use my platform to push my message and our message and people message i don't care about i don't care about that of, of course i'm dis- i'm disappointed but this is this is what is happening yeah i think it's all around the world no in every yeah. in every in every sector you know not only in the music industry mm-hmm. everywhere it's happening what would be your message to artists who choose to stay silent over Gaza they say there's too much for them to risk you know it could be deals or it could be shows or it could be whatever it is what would you say to them if they choose to stay silent i think who is staying silent i can't ju- you know i really can't judge makes me angry a little bit and i ask myself who is inspiring them because every big artist that we grew up with you know all the big biggest artists that are in, still, still inspiring our generations they always spoke and they always used their their music to to drive a message you know so i'm asking myself but okay so what why they are doing this where you want to arrive and and are you are you sure that you are going to lose something and what and what you are going to lose is is a worth compare compare to do the right thing like what can you lose what can you lose views you can lose a table where to stay like an event where they are going to invite you you're going to lose a chart of music like what are what are you going to lose why you are afraid but i i also see that that the reactions of the industry is scary you know, against the artist and who who is speaking about this you're saying it's scary yeah the reaction is scary because it's uh, it's canceling so you risk your dreams but I don't care like a uh, lot of people are risking their lives and a lot of people are dying and a lot of children that are dreaming are dying every day so I don't care and I always say alhamdulillah about what I had in my life and if something has to happen happen I, I I'm not afraid to lose something for this because I know deep in my heart that I'm doing the the right thing But it's it's interesting what you're saying Rally because you're in a very unique position today. And I'm sure when you were growing up in Italy, you didn't have another Rally to to look up to. So you have I'm sure there's kids today who are North African, they're Arab, they're Middle Eastern, uh whatever background they come from, they look at you and they see an example and they see someone that looks like them, right? So what kind of example from these actions that we're talking about that you want to set? I think that growing up and after years of career because it is already like almost 10 years of 10 years mm-hmm. like since my first success but actually is more than 10 years the most important thing for me is is just love honestly with you, uh, being honest with yourself being honest with with your values and and i think what keeps everything every type of art or every type of dream you have is always walking with uh with a value you know mm-hmm. i hope they see me the 
fearless to be honest and to to work for love just that because we live in a world that if you if you take the love channel or a positive channel seems that you're gonna lose something it seems risky you know Others may ask you if your identity as someone who's, you know, Tunisian Italian, if your if if your background um, and ethnic background specifically influences your positions today. Do you think it does? Of course, yes. Uh, it's something that never happened in Italy. We have a different story, for example, from France that is 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 next to us, but <clears throat> there is already a fourth generation of immigrants. You know. And here in Italy, we are just the first. Now it's coming the second generation of immigrants. I see that as a new Italia, you know? A new and Italy. I think this is happening in other countries too. And what, what do you think of it? What does it mean to you? The new Italy is what, I see, what I'm seeing in these days. Like, I'm, I'm, they, send, they are saying, because it's the last days of school. So they do parties at school, you know? Yeah. Uh, of different ages, you know, from elementary school to high school. And they, they are sending me videos of uh, classrooms or schools singing Casa Mia, the entire schools. And I can see like many colors that years ago I, I never seen, you know, mm. like I was part of a classroom with five different colors and the rest was just on Italian, 100% Italian. And now you 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 go in a school in, in an Italian school and you can see the class is half Italian and half new Italians. So this is giving me a lot of hope. And I see that they are they completely know the truth. Hmm. You can't you can't uh, joke around with them, you know, they know the truth and they have the 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 child the childhood uh, instinct, you know. And and I'm really, I can say, I, I, I love to see this. My last question for you today is, with everything that we just covered, you know, the from beginning at the San Remo Festival to now, for anybody that's listening to you, what do you hope they take away from Ghali? What do you hope they, when they listen to this interview, when they listen to you talk, that they take away and, and go about their day? To take advantage of... Uh their own story. Uh, even if we live in a society who is like is, is full of competition and comparing ourselves with other people, uh, we we are never focused on ourselves, on our story. Even if we are traumatized, uh, this society pushed us to to, to be ashamed of many times. You know? Often we are ashamed and uh, how can i say shy about our our story even if there is a lot of chaos around it's good to 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 to, to listen to your heart and and to to take that way because it what it's what will make you special and unique and different and you will inspire you will inspire other people with your own story, even if you think that is not interesting. Instead of hide our story, our experiences, to tell to people, to try to communicate to people, because you will find someone like you living the same struggle, living the same things, and you will inspire and you will help. So at the end of the day, uh we are here just we are passengers and what you will uh leave on this planet is all that matters you know and if you and the end in the end of the day whatever thing you do uh is is but is, is um how can i say spinta is pushed by helping people mm -hmm. It's gonna be it's gonna be a success. I think the real success is to help people. 
And on that note, Ghali, again, thank you for taking time from your schedule. I appreciate you speaking to us. It was, it was a real privilege. Thank you for what you do every day, bro. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Ghali.